Good afternoon, and welcome back to this year's final TVM News broadcast. Today is Friday, April 29th. I'm Emma Rushworth. And I'm Ellen France. Today we have news about a popular pre-finals trend coming back to Marywood. We also have information about Bianca Gifford, a Marywood graduate student who organized a suicide prevention and awareness walk. We'll also check in with TVM sports anchors Ashlyn Jess and Cheyenne Amick to find out the latest in Marywood and professional sports. Students Organized to Uphold Life, or SOUL, is hosting a diaper drive on campus. Both newborn-sized diapers and 4T and 5T pull-ups are needed for donations. The diapers will then be given to St. Joseph's Baby Pantry in Scranton. Diapers can be dropped off at boxes in Nazareth Dining Hall, the Learning Commons, Campus Ministry, and the Liberal Arts Center. It's time again for Marywood's annual pre-finals tradition. Flapjack Fest will be held in the Nazareth Dining Hall on Monday, May 2nd from 8 to 10 p.m. The annual event features faculty serving breakfast to students, as well as a balloon artist and on-campus a cappella group, the Nomadic Chromatics. Marywood graduate student Bianca Gifford organized a suicide prevention walk on campus this weekend. The Out of the Darkness Suicide Prevention Walk acts as a fundraiser for suicide prevention and awareness. Gifford held the walk to honor her father, who died of suicide in 2015. In honor of Earth Week last week, Marywood has announced their new Environmental Studies program. This program will focus on three tracks, Environmental Humanities, Justice, and Science. This program will focus on three, three topics in a more advocacy-based approach. Student Government Association President Austin Miller spoke at a capital rally to petition the state government to increase state grants. The rally comes as an increase in grant funding was approved. The Pennsylvania Higher Education Assistance Agency approved a measure to increase the formula that determines state grant allocations on Thursday. Miller was quoted by Penn Live as saying that the grants are important to help Pennsylvanians, quote, attend college and pursue their dreams. The Moses Taylor Foundation gave a grant of roughly $79,000 to Marywood to support the addition of a lateral simon birthing simulator. This simulator will help nurse, nursing students prepare for their clinicals, in which they may be asked to help out with a difficult delivery. When we return, we have news about a woman who committed retail theft. Myth. If you get COVID-19, you'll recover after a few days. That myth is false. We're only just beginning to understand the effects of COVID-19 on the human body. As we're starting to see more and more people identifying as long haulers who are having symptoms for weeks, if not months, after their initial infection. Continue to wear a mask, socially distance, and wash your hands. Together, we can keep COVID out of school. For ways to keep your community safe, go to backtoschooltogether.com. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Stars visit their friends. Look! Hey, let's check out this park. Find a great local park or forest near you, go to discovertheforest.org. I don't think we're free in this country. For a hundred years, you saw black people menaced and targeted and lynched and beaten and brutalized. I think we're burdened by this history. More people have to be willing to do that uncomfortable, inconvenient thing that justice requires for things to get better. Truth can inspire change. Learn more at EJI.org. Vinyl lovers rejoice. After a downtown stable closed earlier this month, a new record spot has popped up in Scranton. On and On, a vintage shop on Kapaus Avenue, purchased the entirety of Embassy Vinyl's remaining collection after the Adams Avenue store closed its doors. A new section of On and On, dubbed Record Town, opened to the public on Saturday. The opening featured sidewalk sales of vinyl records and cassette tapes, as well as CDs. An accident caused Route 6 in Dixon City to close on Saturday night. 
The stretch of land known as the Scranton Carbondale Highway closed down at 8 p.m. on Saturday. It is still unknown what caused the crash or if anyone was injured. The retaining wall on which a vibrant piece of Scranton is painted is getting an upgrade. Repairs on the retaining wall along the President Joseph Biden Expressway and Biden Street in downtown Scranton will be repaired over the next three weeks. The repairs will cause some lane closures, which could lead to congested traffic in the area. The walls have Electric City-themed murals, which were painted in 2006. Police arrested a woman last week after she committed $1,200 worth of retail theft from the JCPenney's at the Wyoming Valley Mall. Wilkes-Barre police arrested 54-year-old Tracy Simoson of Sawyersville last Wednesday. After searching the items on her, police also found stolen merchandise from Hollister, American Eagle, Aeropostale, Victoria's Secret, and Spencer's Gifts. Some roads in Wilkes-Barre are set to be upgraded in the near future. Thanks to funds from the American Recovery Act, the city launched a street rehabilitation po project to fix pothole-ridden streets. The first phase of the project is estimated to cost $900,000 and will upgrade sewer, sewer and stormwater systems, leading to the roads being repaved. A Bloomsburg University student's post looking for her missing flannel has gone viral. Senior Katie Rose was wearing her late father's flannel at a tavern on April 9th when she took it off to go to the bathroom and has yet to find it. Her post looking for the flannel has been shared 600 times. Katie says it's ironic that the flannel went missing when it did since it was only a few days before her dad would have turned 62. A burglary in Wyoming County may be connected to similar thefts in the area, according to state police. Joe's Quick Mart along Route 6 and 11 in Factoryville was burglarized Sunday night. And while it's not said what was taken, police did say the, th the thief got into the safe. The forensic unit was on scene in the hopes of gathering evidence from discarded cigarette butts nearby. Police say the burglary is similar to ones in Luzerne County and in Clark Summit. A Philadelphia-based law firm has released a final report on the wrongdoings committed by the former head of Luzerne County Children and Youth Services. The report states that former head Joanne Van Son failed to investigate more than 200 cases of child abuse and neglect in 2017. Last year, Van Son pleaded guilty to child endangerment and obstruction charges and was sentenced to three years probation. When we come back, we'll tell you about Elon Musk and his new financial endeavor. Myth. I can party with people as long as they don't have symptoms. That myth is false. As we've seen, up to 40% of people who have COVID-19 are asymptomatic and can pass it on to others. So I'd recommend avoiding any social parties, especially indoor ones. If you want to try to socialize but reduce your risk, I'd recommend meeting outside in small groups, continuing to wear a mask, and socially distancing from others if you can. Then together, we can keep COVID-19 out of school. For ways to keep your community safe, go to backtoschooltogether.com. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight, he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago, in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzz warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. I am what hunger looks like in America. I am an eight-year-old girl who's not excited for the last day of school. Because this may be the last time I'll have lunch. Till September. I am a single father of two who works three part-time jobs. And that's, that's still, still not, not enough, enough to put food on the table. I was created by artificial intelligence from faces of the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. Feeding America, 200 food banks strong. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. Ah! Selfies nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Texas's highest criminal court stayed the execution of a woman set to die two days after the decision. Melissa Lucio was convicted of the death of her two-year-old daughter in 2008. Her defense team argued that new evidence exonerates her in the death. Lucio is the only Latina on Texas's death row and would have been the first woman to be executed in the state since 2014. Tesla CEO and billionaire Elon Musk has bought Twitter. 
Musk will pay the social media source $44 billion and will make the company private. This whole transaction happened less than one month after Musk asked to buy Twitter, saying that he would allow free speech on the app. The United States has promised more aid to Ukraine as Russian attacks ramp up. United States Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin met with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky Monday morning. Since the war began in February, over $3 billion in military aid have been sent to Ukraine. Russian forces continued attacks in eastern Ukraine, including the city of Kharkiv. Senator Orrin Hatch passed away on Saturday in Salt Lake City at 88 years old. Hatch was the longest serving Republican in the United States Senate and the longest serving representative from Utah. He was first voted to the Senate in 1976 and retired in 2019. The world's oldest person has died. Kane Tanaka of Japan was certified as the oldest living person by the Guinness Book of World Records in 2019. Tanaka was born in 1903 and passed away this week at the age of 119. She was remembered by her family for her sweet tooth, which she continued as she died, asking for cola and chocolate. 100 people died in Nigeria on Sunday after an illegal oil refinery exploded. Two suspects are on the loose and are being searched for by the police. Illegal oil refineries are a big deal in Nigeria, with $3 million worth of crude oil theft occurring due to them between January 2021 and February 2022. Sam Long, a biology teacher in Colorado, is being criticized for teaching that eggs come from ovaries, not women, in an effort to show support for non-binary and transgender students. A video was posted of Long's lesson on an account titled, quote, Libs of TikTok on TikTok, a popular social media app. On a Zoom call with Department of Education staffers, Long said his reasoning for teaching this way is because, quote, in our classroom, we need to be a stickler for inclusive language in any conversation, and especially with the content that we teach. We need to be clear that we're including all living things, including all people in that. A 13-year-old from Minnesota is about to graduate college. Elliot Tanner has a 3.78 GPA from the University of Minnesota. He takes place in undergraduate research and tutors classmates. His plan is to become a theoretical physicist and one day teach at the university. When we return, we'll check in with TVM sports anchors Ashlyn Jess and Cheyenne Amick for the latest in Marywood and professional sports. COVID-19 has changed how we express our faith and gather to worship. Now it's time to take the first step that lets us get back to spreading the word without spreading concern. Before we can safely come together, we need the facts. As COVID-19 vaccines become available, you may have questions. Should I get it? Is it safe? Should I wait? It's smart to question. Now, get the facts at GetVaccineAnswers.org so you can make an informed decision when vaccines are available to you. Hey world, I have a quick message. It's about safe driving. All right, let's go. Anytime you're driving, have the seatbelt buckle tight. Both hands on the wheel and your phone out of sight. We're not in your hand trying to text somebody back because if you do, your car might get smacked. The moral of the story, just put your phone down. The people on the road will stay safe and sound. Put your phone down, put your phone down. People on the road will stay safe and sound. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Marywood. I'm Ashlyn Jess. And I'm Cheyenne Amick. Ashlyn, did you hear about the Phoenix Suns employee that illegally sold tickets on StubHub? No, I didn't, but there has to be an interesting story behind that. But before we get to hear it, here's the latest in Marywood sports. The Marywood women's tennis team has officially concluded their regular season. 
The girls are entering the Atlantic East playoffs with a seven-game win streak, allowing us to be the number one seed. Their final match was against Marymount University, where the Pacers dominated them with a final score of 9-0. Allison Bashore was selected to the Atlantic East Conference Women Tennis Athlete of the Week for the third time this season. The next match will be the Atlantic East Conference semifinals against Gwynedd Mercy University. The Marywood men's tennis team, the number three seed, concluded their season after being defeated by Newman University, the number two seed, this past Wednesday, April 27th. After suffering a six-game loss streak, the Marywood baseball team finally had a comeback, competing against Karen University in a hard-fought battle this past Wednesday, April 27th. The Pacers won 7-6. The Pacers' senior day game is tomorrow, April 30th. Special correspondent Soros Fonson has more information. On Saturday, April 30th, Marywood baseball will have their senior day here at Pacer Field. And they will be squaring off against St. Joe's of Brooklyn. The senior day game will start at 12.30 and then a doubleheader at 2.30. If you are unable to attend to this event, you will be able to watch the game live at MarywoodPacers.com. And let's go Pacers! This is Soren Svonson for TVM News. After an 11-game win streak, Marywood softball team fell to Misericordia University in the first round of their doubleheader this past Sunday, losing 11-6. However, our girls were able to bounce back in the second game, winning 9-6. Mara Hamm was selected for the Atlantic East Conference Pitcher of the Week Award, and Kate Becker was selected for the weekly honor roll. The Pacers entered the Atlantic East Conference playoffs today as the number one seed. Their first game is against number six seed, Centenary University. The game started at noon, and following that, the girls take on the number four seed, Newman University, today as well. Following those games, the Atlantic East Conference Championship will begin on May 6th. The Marywood men's lacrosse team has concluded their regular season this past Saturday against Newman University. The Pacers were victorious, winning 7-5. John Scabello broke the school record for single-season goals, acquiring 46 this season so far. Nick Erickson broke the Marywood record for single-season face-off wins. Connor Reed was named to the Atlantic East Conference Offensive Player of the Week, and John Scabello was named to the weekly honor roll. The Pacers are entering the Atlantic East Conference playoffs as the number three seed. In the first round of playoffs, the Pacers are going up against number six, Gwynedd Mercy University, tomorrow, April 30th at 1 p.m. The Marywood women's lacrosse team has also concluded their regular season. Their final game was this past Tuesday against Keystone College, winning 22-4. Emma Solomon was selected to the Atlantic East Conference Weekly Honor Roll. The Pacers will enter the Atlantic East Conference playoffs tomorrow as the number five seed, going up, going up against Immaculata University, who is the number four seed, at 1 p.m. Marywood's men's golf team competed in the Atlantic East Conference Championship this past weekend. The Pacers came in second out of six teams with a score of 655. Congratulations, boys. That's it for the last Marywood Sports update of the 2021 to 2022 school year. Here's Cheyenne Amick with the latest in professional sports. Thanks, Ashlyn. The New York Yankees placed center fielder Aaron Hicks on the paternity list this week and has recalled infielder outfielder Miguel Andujar from the Scranton Wilkes-Barre Rail Riders, the Yankees AAA affiliate. Hicks is expecting his first child with wife Cheyenne Woods. Hicks is currently batting with a .277 average and has kept up a .377 on-base percentage this season. Andujar is hitting .347 and has had three homers this season with the Rail Riders. And his first game with the Yankees will be when they play the Kansas City Royals this evening at Kansas City. A former employee for the Phoenix Suns has pleaded guilty to illicitly selling tickets to the, for, to the team's games. To the team's games. Former ticket manager Jeffrey Markison pled guilty to selling more than 2,800 of the team's tickets through StubHub, a third-party vendor, between 2017 and 2019. The Suns do not sell tickets on that platform. He has agreed to pay $458,000 in restitution to the team, according to a plea agreement filed in Maricopa County Superior Court. Markison is scheduled to be sentenced on June 7th on the account of felony fraud and theft. His sentence could carry a maximum sentence of 13 years in prison, but in a plea agreement, his legal team is hoping for a maximum of three years and probation. He will also owe $1,700 $1 to the Arizona Attorney General's Anti-Racketeering Revolving Fund and $11,000 to Arizona Department of Revenue State Court Records. Washington Capitol... Ca 
Washington Capitals left winger and captain Alex Ovechkin was injured during Sunday night's 4-3 shootout loss against the Toronto Maple Leafs. After failing to score on a breakaway attempt, Ovechkin had tripped over Toronto Maple Leafs goaltender Eric Calgreen's stick. His arm and shoulder had then made contact with the boards before remaining on the ice for several seconds. Before medical attention came to his aid, he eventually got up and skated off the ice. Ovechkin also yelled at game officials about a penalty not being called on the play. In a statement, Calgary explains that he didn't mean to trip the Capitals player and hopes he is fine. The Washington Capitals' next game is tonight at 7 p.m. against the New York Rangers. This is the final game before playoffs start on Monday, May 2nd. Former Georgia, former, former Georgia linebacker Adam Anderson was indicted and charged by a grand jury on Tuesday over the sexual assault of a 21-year-old woman that happened on October 29th in Athens, Georgia. Anderson was once considered a first-round draft pick in this week's NFL draft, and his arraignment is scheduled for June 13th. He was arrested on November 10th and released a week later on a $25,000 bond. Anderson was also suspended indefinitely from the football team following the notification of the athletic department on November 2nd. Before his arrest, he was a star of Georgia's defense, leading the team with five sacks, 32 tackles, and 14 quarterback hurries. He was absent from the team's final seven games. At the time of his arrest, he was ranked the number 29 prospect for the 2022 NFL Draft and the number four outside linebacker. That'll do it for professional sports. On behalf of Ashlyn and myself, thank you for tuning in to TV Marywood Sports Segment. When we come back, we'll check in one last time with anchors Emma and Ellen for a happy ending pet story. It's on. Release the meteor. Oh. He's looking at you, kid. I dig it. That felt pretty great because the fight isn't over yet. You will see me choose to protect my community by wearing a face cover. And even with my face covered, you will see me. As a son. As a man with a never quit attitude. As a fighter for change. Join me in wearing a face cover to help stop the spread of the coronavirus. Because this is one small act of kindness that has the power to make a big difference. Hello everybody, your old pal Grover here with some health tips. Wash your hands throughout the day with soap and water for 20 seconds. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, oh well. Um, also, practice physical distance by staying six feet away from people in public. And do not forget to wear a mask. And wow! So that is where the soap went. <laughs> Caring for each other because we are all in this together. A family pet will be getting extra treats after digging up rare coins worth $8,000. Ollie was bought as a surprise for Adam Clark's nine-year-old daughter. The Blackpool resident took the dog out for his first trip to the park where Ollie dug up 15 gold sovereign pieces from the 19th century. Clark has referred to Ollie as his little gold digger. She take my mind. Now I ain't saying she a gold digger. What I do? <laughs> That's going to do it for this week's edition of TVM News. For everyone at TVM Marywood, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to follow TV Marywood's YouTube page and like the TVM Facebook page to stay up to date on the latest happenings and to watch additional content. I'm Ellen France. And I'm Emma Rushworth. Good luck on finals and have a fantastic summer, Marywood. We'll see you next year.